Okay, so it turns out the major that the majority of synaptic connections in your brain uh, are between independent, you know, kind of nerve cells um, that wire up into networks of linked neurons. Um, and at each of these individual synaptic connections, actually, there's a gap. Um, and the majority, again, are uh, what we call chemical uh, synapses. So there's going to be actually the you know, release of a neurotransmitter, let's say from the end of one neuron upon the arrival of an action potential. Um, and then there's going to be the, um, uh, the receipt of that message, that chemical message, you know, by receptor proteins that we're going to see are embedded in the postsynaptic membrane here that can interpret, can either, you know, result in inhibition uh, of this next neuron in terms of, um, you know, its uh, propensity to fire an action potential or, uh, you know, uh, excitation of the neuron. Um, or we're going to see, you know, via receptor activation, specific receptor activation, you can get actual physical changes in the very structure uh, of the cell and the synaptic connection that it makes with others. So um, there's a lot of potential responses. The chemical synapse is actually uh, extraordinarily useful because those chemicals can be interpreted by so many different types of receptor proteins and you know, result in so many different kinds of changes. Um, we'll talk a lot about that this um, week. Um, so the, the, in contrast to a chemical synapse, actually, um, there is um, you know, something known as the electrical synapse, where you know, there's just like, let's say, um, you know, much, a much shorter gap between the you know, presynaptic membrane, the axon terminal of the first neuron, and the postsynaptic neuron, uh, you know, uh, the postsynaptic uh, mes uh, membrane of the next. And, you know, there are going to be these um, kind of membrane-spanning channels, they're called connections, um, that sort of go in, you know, across the membrane of the presynaptic and across the membrane of the postsynaptic. They, they meet up and they form like a continuous channel between the two neurons um, at the synapse, um, and they allow for, let's say, sodium ions to go through. So you get, you know, the sodium, you know, potassium, you know, in and out, you know, propagation of the action potential can arrive at the axon terminal, and in these electrical synapses, it could just race into the next cell and depolarize and you get initiation, you know, potentially of another action potential in the new cell. Um, these electrical synapses, you know, it was interesting. I learned that they were quite rare, uh, but at the University of Oregon, they're doing a lot of um, research on, uh, you know, electrical synapses. And it turns out that about 20% of synapses in adult vertebrates, um, including zebrafish and people, are actually uh, electrical. And there were more uh, actual connections you know, synaptic connections in our um, in our brains when we were much younger, like during fetal development, for example, where they were electrical in nature uh, and had these connexons. In um, in uh, in invertebrates, they call them inexons or in sorry inexons actually that connect up the the, the, the electrical synapses with like a channel. Um, and you know what's interesting is that when you remove the proteins from electrical synapses, you know again the connexins um, in vertebrates and also in exons in invertebrates, you get fewer um, chemical sy synapses su subsequently forming, which sort of suggests that like um, electrical synapses sort of build an initial and critical blueprint of the nervous system, then you know then then becomes a chemical synapse, you know. And of course, if you think about the the disadvantages, you know the limitations of an electrical synapse. It just, you know, propagates the signal. So it just, it, you know, it, it, there's not the <laughs> complexity that you see uh, when you have chemical uh, communication of a synapse that could be interpreted, you know, in, in many different ways, including excitation, but also inhibition and, you know, changes in gene expression and protein synthesis. Mm.